Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's European briefing. So in this uh, approximately 20-minute uh, live webinar, we will be taking an in-depth look at the trading markets for the day ahead. So without further ado, please do take a brief moment to familiarize yourself with our, with our disclaimer. Um, and, uh, and obviously note the financial risks involved in trading the financial markets. Um, so hopefully you'll have an opportunity to, um, to familiarize yourself with our disclaimer. Okay, so let's start with a few pieces of housekeeping just before we begin. Uh, do feel free to ask questions at any point throughout. Just locate your chat box on the right-hand corner of your screen and you'll be able to post your questions and they'll come straight through to us and I'll answer them for you as soon as I can. And uh, for our members, this live webinar is being recorded and will be made available in your members area once the webinar has concluded. And of course, we'll have our normal Q&A session at the end of this webinar. So if you do have any questions for that point, um, we can go through it then. Okay, so um, what are we gonna cover? We're going to start by reviewing potential market moving news for the day, see if there's any potential news events that can impact some of the trades that we're potentially looking for. We'll then review previous price action. So what we'll do with this is we'll have a look at daily timeframes, get a bit of an overview in terms of who's in control of each market. And that will allow us to uh, effectively develop a trade plan for the day ahead. So we're talking about um, deciding upon what markets we should be looking for opportunities to trade. Okay, so um, let's get started uh, and we'll start by reviewing potential market moving news. And as you can see from Forex Factory, there's a number of PMI, which are manufacturing um, news releases out over the next hour or so, um, impacting the, uh, the French, the German, and the Flash. So all have the potential to impact the, um, the Euro, uh, however, to, to varying degrees. So um, it's just a case of the market expecting these kind of numbers. And um, if numbers are, are roughly in line, then there'll probably be very little reaction because a lot of those prices are now built in. Um, so if we get a large deviation, of course, um, that has the potential to either strengthen or weaken the euro accordingly. And as you can see, for the remaining of the for the remainder of the day, um, there's very little major news. Um, I suppose we can we can just focus on the Canadian dollar news release and we just have the governor of the bank of canada uh Pelos, um is is speaking in front of the house of commons so they'll be asking him all sorts of questions about about the monetary policy decisions um and obviously rate hikes and things like that so it just has the potential to impact the canadian dollar um accordingly so that is pretty much it from a news perspective for the day so uh, it's always worth just having these news events uh, in the back of your mind when you're going through the charts. So as you can see, a fairly light day as far as news is concerned. So now let's let's move straight over to the price charts and we'll see what is currently happening um, with um, some of the major global markets out there. And it's, it's worth just, just pointing out um, the fact that we saw a small little gap to the upside on the open. Um, and it looks like we're getting close to, to closing that gap like completely. So the high of this market is the 9007. And uh, we're, we're currently just moving down to that level there. So once the gap is closed, you might find opportunities uh, for the dollar to strengthen. We're coming off the back of, I suppose, an interesting um, last couple of days towards the end of last week where the, where the dollar strengthened considerably. Um, let me show you. So we had a two day very bullish move. There's a lot of sort of positive rhetoric around the US dollar. Um, now from a, a price action perspective, if I just bring across my, my pen briefly, um, we are looking at these levels as a first port of call. So we do need to see prices break that particular level um, is what we're looking to do in the first instance. And then 
unfortunately for us traders, we have another major level of resistance at the 9088 level um, where we could see a complete reversal over this sideways moving price action over the last three months. So we're in a consolidated market and even the price action of last week, which is um, you can see the, the, the small double bottom in this market, which is quite bullish in its own right. But we do need to break above these more recent highs. Um, and, and that's only stage one, because stage two is effectively attacking the 90.880 level. And then that would be, if we get a confirmed break above that level, would be a confirmed um, breakout of, of, of consolidation, which is obviously you know, what we're looking for at the end of this um, period of consolidation is either a confirmed breakout to the upside or to the downside. So it must be um, acknowledged in, in context that, yes, we've had a couple of days of bullish price action, but we are firmly, we're at the upper end of, of this trading range, um, and we've got some key levels of support resistance to overcome uh, before we can see an unwinding of this period of consolidation and potentially at this point, uh, a nice sizable move to the upside. So just for now, um, a little bit more cautions required. Yes, we might get opportunities in and around this price point to, to push these prices higher. Um, as you can see, they, the, the, these prices gapped up and now it looks like we're in the process of filling that gap. And now let's see what, what this market has in mind. Um, of course, we can't ignore the potential uh, for this market to um, to actually continue to push lower. <coughs> so um, what we mean by here is a little bit of a, a slow period and then these markets sort of pushing back down to these lows. So we'll have to wait and see we'll have to reserve a little bit of judgment apply a little bit of patience um this market still needs to kind of reveal itself uh, to us um but certainly off the back of thursday and friday's price action um we would prefer this market to create uh what's called a higher low which um is is another reason for this market to be pushing to the upside so we have a number of technical um indicators let's say uh from a price action perspective uh, suggesting that these prices can push higher but we are watching these highs very very closely and we would like to see a confirmed break of those highs before committing our capital to any particular trade and we're very close to those levels at the moment okay so that is the dollar uh, index and a lot of the same sort of situation is not just occurring in in the euro but across a lot of the dollar pairs so just looking at the euro this is an inverted picture of the dollar index so we we, we effectively gapped to the downside this time and it looks like that gap has has closed um so now it's a little bit bullish at this moment in time but we are very early in the trading day and let's see what happens over the coming hours we would, of course, prefer to see this this price break these lows back on the in the uh, 6th of April, and then we'll attack the 21.56, pushing lower. So we'll just watch and monitor this market very carefully. Um, one of the bearish moves last week was the was the pound dollar. As you can see, four days this market came off to the downside. Um, you can see that we. To, the, to this moment in time, we've not really broken this particular low, but we have broken the, um, we were focusing very closely on, on this area on Friday. Um, but we got a fairly consistent break through that level and prices just kept pushing lower. So, so now this level, uh, we'll see how price behaves to this level. Do we get a push higher up to this level before we get a rollover? Uh, we'll obviously have to wait and see. So just a little bit of patience again is required with some of these markets um but as you can see a very very clean pullback off the high so we did make a high before this uh incredible pullback so now it's up to the bulls do they identify this price the 140 level as an opportunity to buy this market and if so 
do we start attacking new highs um or does does this price interact with an ascending level give opportunities to sellers to come in at this market and maybe take it another leg to the downside so we're just in mid mid preparation for either uh, attacking the highs again and seeing if we can break and, and make new highs or whether we're going to get a little bit of indecision around this kind of price action um, and, and get that little move lower. So a lot of this move was as a result of fairly poor uh, inflation data posted last week um, and that mixed with a kind of a dovish approach from um, um, Mark Carney, the governor of the Bank of England, um, suggesting that it wasn't a done deal that um, the Bank of England would be increasing the rates in, in May. Um, however, some of that was being priced in and, and as a result, you can see this price action pulling back as a result. So we're, we're, we're at the, the 140 level, it's a major psychological level as well. So let's now see how price behaves around this level. But from a technical perspective, it's a little bit choppy uh, just with this price action there on Friday. We are getting that indecision just a little bit lower. So um, what it means or what it suggests to us is just um, be a little bit patient with this market. The, the dollar yen, you can see we're threatening to squeeze higher. So this is one of the markets we're going to suggest um, if we do get a break of this, uh, this high, the 107.90 level, and you can see the price has bounced off that even today, over the course of today's trading day, the 107.88 there. So this is definitely one of the markets we're going to look at buying, but only above the 107.90 level. And as you can see, it's a continuation from the previous three days as well. Moving on to the dollar CAD. So we've got a nice explosive move uh, in this market, pushing prices higher. So let's see if we can stay above Friday's high um, and uh, and continue to push higher. However, the move was, was way back here. So um, we now need to uh, obviously manage this trade internally. And um, let's see if the market decides to pull back. Do we get an opportunity to buy it at a lower price once more? Um, but we're definitely looking to to trade this uh, this price action to the upside. So although we've had a, a significant pullback uh, off these highs around the 131 level, um, we've got a clearly defined um, series of um, higher highs and and higher lows as well. So we just expect that this market is moving in this direction excuse my scribbly lines and that's what we're looking to do we're looking to to buy this market in this direction okay so moving on then to the new zealand dollar so we were threatening uh, we spoke about this towards the end of last week um this was a clearly defined um sort of bearish candlestick and we had two really good days in line with the, the strengthening dollar um, down to these lows and you can see that this has provided some support of price so we're looking very closely at these levels and see if we get a break of those levels to the downside it would constitute an opportunity to sell it from these levels so we, we'll be watching this market very very closely see if we can capture a sell in this market um, it's very likely to just be held up, but we will be watching it very, very closely. Um, another market, which is similar kind of price action, we are looking at, at these kinds of lows. So as you can see, we've had an extended move to the downside uh, and literally a bounce off the 7,200 level. So now let's see what happens to price around this area. Do we get a little bounce back up before we, we attack this level again? Or do we get a confirmed breakout, meaning um, we can capture a nice little sell in this market? So we just want to just monitor price action for the short term, moving on to the euro pound. So we're getting a bit of indecision at these prices, the 87, 60 level, in and around this level, as you can see. And we're experiencing a pullback um, off the breakout lows. So. It'll be interesting to see how much conviction 
um, traders have in driving these prices lower. Will we actually make new lows or will the, the, the 86.90 level continue to stack up in this market, provide a little bit of support? And do we get pr prices uh, a little bit more range bound for a little bit longer? So that would certainly be our anticipation. Um, a lot of that reasoning is as a result of uh, Brexit negotiations and um, and other sort of views from the Bank of England and uh, and uh, UK um, data, which is being released as well. So there's, there's a number of fundamental factors that suggest that the likeliest outcome is that this market is going to continue to be a little bit more range bound until a lot of these decisions are, are kind of finalized. And then we might see really confirmed breaks either to the upside or to the downside in this market. However, obviously a lot can change pretty quickly. So we will obviously keep all of our options open at all times. Um, the Euro Yen next, you can see very, very choppy price action, pushing higher, pushing lower, failing to, to confirm or to, to close above or, or even open below a certain price point. So very choppy market. We're going to wait for this sort of consolidation to play itself out before we can we can commit to either uh, a buy trade or a sell trade. So moving on to the global indice markets. Again, fairly choppy price action. What's interesting to see is the gap up here. So we closed. So we closed this market at the 2671 level. And as you can see, we opened today's trading at 26.82. So it's better to have a look at this on a, on a smaller time frame. So you can see we were pushing lower. Uh, we had a little pullback towards the end of Friday's session, and we've opened up higher. Now, it's interesting to see that we have just closed this particular gap. So that's often uh, what can happen sooner rather than later is you get a close of the gap. And then you can get these um, technical moves pushing higher. So let's see how price behaves around this level, 2670 level. And uh, if you get structural failures or opportunities to maybe take this market higher. Um, however, saying that, looking at this price action, it, it's we're, we're not it's not it's not a nice bit of price action to kind of work with. Um, you don't really want to see prices behaving like this if you can avoid it. Um, so we are getting a bit of selling, gapping up and a bit of selling coming into this market. We have the lows, Friday's lows to to confirm that this is a continuation of the pullback off the highs. Um, so the low is the 26.59. So we'll be watching this low very, very carefully. And we're just a little bit off that low as things currently stand. Um, it's the same situation across uh, the, the remaining global indices. Um, a little bit choppy, not not great price action. This time we gapped up significant, significantly higher. As you can see in this market, we had a nice gap up. We've now closed that gap. So now let's see what this market um, will or will not do. So a reversal today would actually be quite bullish. Um, so just a little bit unclear as things currently stand. And because of that, we're going to obviously watch it very closely. but. It's very difficult to commit to either either direction. A break beneath the low would continue this pullback. Um, however, a reversal has the potential to look quite bullish as well um, and be able to, to get a little bit additional price action pushing prices higher. So this is the NASDAQ, same situation applies. Moving over to the FTSE, um, we had a, a, a marginal, well, no, we had a, a gap up and we've since closed that gap, as we've seen almost across the board. So now we'll see what what's truly going on in this market. So we're clearly in a in a bit of a, a shorter term uptrend, and that's the reason behind the potential for um, a bit of bullish price action. We were looking at this very very closely. We were expecting to see a little bit more bullish price action. Uh, than what we've effectively seen, bearing in mind the British pound has sold off quite considerably. So we didn't really get the follow through we would have anticipated. So the trade proved to be a, a pound trade uh, rather than the impact that it had on the FTSE. 
So um, a couple of spinning tops there, and we might see the same again today. So again, just a market to, to just monitor for now. Um, the German, we can see the market has kind of bounced off this level of resistance to 12, uh, 12,567 level, and we're currently trading below that level. So if anything, we, if we get a break of Friday's low, we might see some continuation uh, in this market pushing lower. Uh, interesting to see the, the gap the gap down um, in the gold market. So it would be interesting to see a small gap, not, nothing of any major, um, and we've kind of filled that bit of price action, uh, and we're looking, well, we're just consolidating since the open of this market. So that is really the market conditions in which we're trading. And on a bigger time frame, you can see the 13.65 and to the upside and the 1306 to the downside. And we're currently trading in the middle um, of that range. Now, the first sign of a bearish market uh, would constitute um, what's called a structural failure. So we are looking closely at these prices. We might get a little push lower, more of an intraday trade. Um, we're just gonna be advocates of just monitoring this particular trade um, over the short term. Um, but we might get a little squeeze of prices pushing prices lower in the uh, in the gold market. And just the final market now. Um, on Friday we had the OPEC and non-OPEC uh, meeting uh, in in Jeddah in in Saudi Arabia, and the outcome of that particular meeting was that they were quite satisfied with um, the, the, the the current price of oil. Uh, certainly the Saudis are anticipating uh, uh, prices to continue higher. So they basically decided, in fact, the only decision they did make was to extend the current deal um, to December uh, 2018. And at that point, they would expect prices to be higher than perhaps what they currently are now. So, so far, so good for OPEC. Um, for those of you that don't know, over the last uh, year and a half, the OPEC and non-OPEC countries decided to, 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 to get together. They understood that the price of oil was incredibly low and that creates some significant structural uh, issues and concerns. So back in uh, January 2016, we were around the, the 28 to $30 level. Um, now we are almost twice that particular price. So. Um, it was around this kind of price point here where OPEC decided to get together and we start to see this sort of bit of a bull market creating. So really, it's just a straightforward approach to look for opportunities to buy. If you can off the lower um, uh, the lower trend line, um, however, you might find opportunities within those trend lines as well to take this market higher. So. We've, um, we've had a number of very, very good trades in this market over the last year. Um, it's a bit less than that. Um, and you, you, it's very likely for this uptrend to remain intact. As far as uh, a decision to be made, um, or certainly adding it to our trade plan, um, we, we're in a precarious position. We bounced off the, the upper trend line, um, which can actually give opportunities for bears to start pushing these prices lower. So let's see how prices hold at this at this level. We're at the $68 level currently. Um, we have the potential for this market to squeeze lower, but we shall uh, we shall wait and see. So that is the crude oil. So um, that just about um, concludes the the overview on on the daily time frame. So the only market we're going to um, look at in a little bit more detail is the potential for this market to squeeze higher. So for this, we'll have a look at the 15 minute time frame. We'll see how price action, we can see we're breaking through this level as things currently stand. So we wanna see a close above the 107.90 level and prices are currently there at this moment. So we're currently looking at a 15 minute time frame. So there's a few more minutes before the close of this market um, uh, and prices look like they're the at this moment that they're not really comfortable closing above the 107.90 so we'll have to take that into account do we get a little bit more range bound trading or do we get that confirmed break which which will 
potentially give us an opportunity to maybe look for a bit of a pullback and then take this market even higher. So if we do get a break above it and we get a couple of closes above it and prices do pull back to the 107.90, that would be a good pullback trade on a smaller time frame. So that just about concludes um, our, our trade plan. It's the only kind of market we, um, we're we prepared to sort of get uh, active with, um, certainly over the coming uh, few hours. So um, we are watching a number of markets very, very closely. So on that note, let me thank you very much for joining us. Uh, do take care and we look forward to seeing you next time. For everyone here, bye for now.